Okay, class, this week we're revisiting my Peppa Pig rain boots. They were extremely difficult. You should make converses sometime. If you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments. Of course, you're going to say yes. Good ideas. No, that is not going into the... I need a book that says ridiculously bad ideas. <laughs> to create interest on the inside of these boots, I actually dyed the cake batter yellow and teal. Just because they're like fun and childish, so I wanted some color in there. The most important thing with boots or any type of shoe, they're a pair, so you need them to be symmetrical. You know, I'm not using a mold or anything like that. I'm carving two cakes that become a set. So what I do like to do is do them side by side or do each stage one right after the other. Not complete one boot and then work on another boot. I don't know if you would try to do that, but if you were thinking that, don't do that. <laughs> and then I'll do, today's the right day and tomorrow's the left day. So I started off by baking rectangles. I created a template of course. So I created a template that's like the sole of a foot and you want to have that indent and so you want to use it one way and then make sure to flip it the other way before you start cutting out the other boot. I filled and stacked the part of the boots that are the foot and then I filled and stacked the part of the boots that are, you know, the column that goes up your leg. So I actually stacked four cakes in total. And this makes it easier to put together and to add supports. A lot of the times you don't see me add supports. It's not because I'm not doing it. It's more because it's not that interesting, you know, from an entertainment perspective. So when you're carving the boot, you want to keep in mind all the little nuances of a boot. Rain boots are probably the simplest shoe because they don't have a lot of detail. They don't have a lot of flaps. They don't have a heel, if you know what I mean. It's just kind of like a bloop. Like a sock. It's like a sock. Yeah. It's like a, a firm sock. However, you do want to pay attention to like the curvature. The toe part curved right in at the ankle, in a little at the back of the ankle. Otherwise it will just look, and I say this when I'm making it, it'll just look like a moon boot. Like a giant <laughs> boot that no one's actually wearing. Anytime I'm making something three-dimensional or a replica or a replicate of something, it's best when the model is there, like Walter. I had a watermelon. I wish I had a pair of rain boots with me. I created these boots solely from a picture. This is basically the same for any type of shoe cake if you're making like a high top sneaker. If you're making a high top sneaker, you won't necessarily need the middle board because they're not as high as a boot. But I still like building the cake in parts and working with each shoe side by side. I can stack them on top of one another, do all of my carving, and now I can cut my center board out of foam board exactly the size I need it to be. Rather than cutting it ahead of time, having it in the whole cake, and then trying to carve a cake with a board inside. Once you're happy with the shape, we're gonna crumb coat these boots and chill. Now I will say this, often when you're looking at a cake in its layered and stacked form and it's carved, the layers distract you from the shape. You may very well find that when you ice the boots in a solid white and put it in the fridge and take them back out, that's when you might notice they're not carved the way you like because now you're seeing more of a solid shape. If that happens, as annoying as this sounds, this is the perfect opportunity to reshape and then re-ice and chill because better to be unhappy at this stage than to go through the entire fondant process, decorating process, and realize, hey, they don't look like boots. Before we cover the boots in the pink fondant, we need to cover the top of each boot because this is cake, it's not a boot, so it can't be empty, there's cake inside. And so to create the look of emptiness, what I do is roll out black fondant, cover the top of each boot, and then trim that fondant to the exact size of the boot. And this is just to create the illusion of darkness or emptiness. Covering these boots in fondant is the hardest part. It's an awkward shape, 
It doesn't seem large, but as always, when you roll out fondant, you need it to be wider than the measurement of the boot and taller as well, so that there's excess that you can trim away and neaten up as you're covering the cake. What's difficult is it's not just a straight up and down cylinder, right? It's a cylinder with the shoe part underneath. So there's a lot of room for air pockets to gather under the fondant. And at the end of the day, you want these boots to look smooth because they're that sort of rubbery texture and they do look very smooth, unlike other shoes. And I admit when I made these, the second boot took me three tries to cover. And I'm gonna say this, and I know it hurts, but if you're covering a cake like this that's really simple in shape, and by simple, I don't mean the carving of it, I mean the way it looks, it appears simple. And the fondant is giving you trouble. It's tearing, it's peeling away, it's overlapping itself and creasing. You need to rip the Band-Aid off as fast as you can, and by that I mean rip the fondant off and start again as fast as you can. Because if you keep going, even though your intuition is telling you it's not working out, when you try to rip it off at that point, you'll take buttercream with it, maybe some cake, and then you'll have to go back, re-ice, fix up the boot, chill it again. So make that decision quickly if you know it's not working out. While the boots are chilling out in the fridge, this is when I take the opportunity to roll out all the other fondant I need for the details on the boots. So it's going to make it easier to cut. And the pattern that I'm doing is sort of like a childlike camouflage. So it's all freehand. Why are you making a Peppa Pig? We made a Peppa Pig boot because back then, my son loved Peppa. You don't know who Peppa Pig is. Peppa and her parents and her brother George. George, um, and they like to jump in muddy puddles. It's just, we're just watching the cartoon life of pigs. I need to add texture to the fondant that I roll out for the sole. I use some drawer liner, another drawer liner that I had from Ikea and it has dots, I thought it was perfect. And then I need to cut out even strips that I can wrap around the boot. And I also wanna always be careful to line up all the seams. You can glue fondant to fondant with water or a little bit of clear piping gel. You just wanna glue it all the way around. This is when it starts to become satisfying because when they were just pink, they just look weird, like blobs. You know what I mean? There's no detail whatsoever. So the part where I start to add the detail is the fun part. It's long, it's tedious, but that's when I start to see my vision come to life. The boot has a lip because if I just leave it flat on the top with the black fondant and the pink, it doesn't really look like a boot. So I need that fondant lip to rise over the top of the cake. What I did is I had cut that pink fondant flush to the boot, but now I need to add a rip. I take some masking tape and I wrap it around the top of the boot uh, backwards or inside out. So the sticky part of the masking tape is facing out. It's not gonna ruin the fondant. So now I have sort of like a fence. I've created a fence or a girdle. Cake girdles! And now I can cut out bands of pink fondant, glue them to the top of the cake with a little piping gel, and that masking tape is going to keep it in place. And now I have to add a band of fondant along the outside because the actual rim on the boot does stick out from the boot, just like the sole does. The good thing about the boot is there is a rubber strap at the back strap or a rubber detail at the back. Cut out more strips of pink fondant, a darker pink, and line it up at the back, and now I have covered all the seams. I love that. I didn't have to seam hide. It looks natural. It looks like it's part of the boot. So now's the fun part. I've rolled out some fondant in different colors and this is when I have to start cutting out that childlike camouflage pattern and I'm doing this freehand. So when you're cutting the curves, you have to make sure to use a light hand and mainly use the tip of the knife so that you can get smooth curves, not like jagged turns in the knife that will look sort of rough and that's not what we're going for. So I'm just gonna cut out as many different natural patterns from all three colors. Have them all laid out, 
and then I'm going to start to add them to the boot. Wherever it overlapped, I went in with my sharp knife and cut away the excess so the pattern would just look like it, you know, each color was like morphing into the other one. So the rainbows also have like a little buckle on the top that you can use to tighten the boot. So again, I'm just using pink fondant, made a template, cut out the buckle. For the buckle part, I had to make that. So I cut that out of gray gum paste and it's best to do things like that ahead of time. If you can, let them dry and then I painted them silver and added them to the buckle on the boot. There's little sort of rivets that hold them in place. For that, I just use silver dragees because they're edible and they're silver and they did the trick. Who's Hunter? Hunter. <laughs> I don't know who Hunter is. I don't know if it was a person, but that's a brand of boots. Oh. They're a brand of oh, rain boots. Well, they didn't people. really collab with us. You know that they rejected us, right? Yeah. We called and we were like, you know, we could kick a hunter boot. And, and you know what their answer was? Am I allowed to say this? Yes, I am. Their answer was that they were a fashion brand. Okay. And so they didn't think like a cake collab. And I'm like, listen, I'm not a fashionista, but it's my belief that people only wear rain boots because it's raining. It's nobody's choice of boot. You know what I mean? <laughs> of course, this is the Peppa Pig collab, so I have to make little Peppa Pig. I used a template, cut out Peppa and her outfit, and because she's a cartoon, she looks outlined, and go in with a food coloring marker and create the outline. At this point, I'm super tired because I've been making a cake for days, and now I need a really steady hand to outline her carefully and make her look cute. Orhan says Peppa's head looks like a hairdryer. It does. Yeah. Right. It really does. Guys, let me know if you ever use this tutorial to make your own footwear out of cake. Let me know if you've done it. Let me know in the comments. Let me know what type of footwear you would cake. And I say this every time. By the time I get to the end, I forget what the inside looked like like in real time. So then when I cut it open, I was like, oh my gosh, it's yellow and teal. Cause I just feel like if the outside is so decorated, the inside should, should have something too. Yeah. Okay guys, I will see you next week.